Mariculture is a specialized branch of aquaculture involving the cultivation of marine organisms for food and other products in the open ocean, or an enclosed section of the ocean, or in tanks, ponds or raceways which are filled with seawater. An example of the latter is the farming of marine fish, including finfish and shellfish like prawns, or oysters and seaweed in saltwater ponds. Non-food products produced by Mariculture include fish meal, nutrient agar, jewelry, and cosmetics. Methods Algae shellfish Similar to algae cultivation, shellfish can be farmed in multiple ways on ropes, in bags or cages, or directly on the intertidal substrate. Shellfish mariculture does not require feeder fertilizer inputs, nor insecticides or antibiotics, making shellfish aquaculture a self-supporting system. Shellfish can also be used in multi-species cultivation techniques, where shellfish can utilize waste generated by higher trophic level organisms. Artificial reefs after trials in 2012 a commercial sea ranch was set up in flinders bay western australia to raise abalone the ranch is based on an artificial reef made up of 5,000 separate concrete units called abitats the 900 kilograms abitats can host 400 abalone each the reef is seeded with young abalone from an onshore hatchery. The abalone feed on seaweed that has grown naturally on the habitats, with the ecosystem enrichment of the bay also resulting in growing numbers of Jewfish, pink snapper, rast samson fish among other species. Brad Adams, from the company, has emphasized the similarity to wild abalone and the difference from shore-based aquaculture. We not aquaculture, we're ranching, because once they're in the water they look after themselves. Open Ocean Raising marine organisms under controlled conditions in exposed, high-energy ocean environments beyond significant coastal influence, is a relatively new approach to mariculture. Open ocean aquaculture uses cages, nets, or long line arrays that are moored, towed to float freely. Research and commercial open ocean aquaculture facilities are in operation or under development in Panama, Australia, Chile, China, France, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Mexico, and Norway. As of 2004, two commercial open ocean facilities were operating in U.S. waters, raising thread from near Hawaii and Cobia near Puerto Rico. An operation targeting Big Eye Tuna recently received final approval. All U.S. commercial facilities are currently sited in waters under state or territorial jurisdiction. The largest deep water open ocean farm in the world is raising cobia 12 kilometers off the northern coast of Panama in highly exposed sites. Enhanced stocking Enhanced stocking is a Japanese principle based on operant conditioning and the migratory nature of certain species. The fishermen raise hatch in a closely knitted net in a harbor, sounding an underwater horn before each feeding. When the fish are old enough they are freed from the net to mature in the open sea. During spawning season, about 80% of these fish return to the birthplace. The fishermen sound the horn and then net those fish that respond. Seawater ponds In seawater pond mariculture, fish are raised in ponds which receive water from the sea. This has the benefit that the nutrition present in the seawater can be used. This is a great advantage over traditional fish farms for which the farmers buy feed. Other advantages of that water purification plants may be planted in the ponds to eliminate the buildup of nitrogen from fecal and other contamination. Also, the ponds can be left unprotected from natural predators, providing another kind of filtering. Environmental Effects Mariculture has rapidly expanded over the last two decades due to new technology, improvements in formulated feeds, greater biological understanding of farmed species, increased water quality within closed farm systems, greater demand for seafood products, site 
expansion and government interest. As a consequence, mariculture has been subject to some controversy regarding its social and environmental impact. Commonly identified environmental impacts from marine farms are wastes from cage cultures, farm escapees and invasives, genetic pollution and disease and parasite transfer, habitat modification. Dot. As with most farming practices, the degree of environmental impact depends on the size of the farm, the cultured species, stock density, type of feed, hydrography of the site, and husbandry methods. The adjacent diagram connects these causes and effects. Wastes from cage cultures. Mariculture of finfish can require a significant amount of fish meal or other high-protein food sources. Originally, a lot of fish meal went to waste due to inefficient feeding regimes and poor digestibility of formulated feeds which resulted in poor feed conversion ratios. In cage culture, several different methods are used for feeding farmed fish, from simple hand feed feeding to sophisticated computer-controlled systems with automated food dispenses coupled with in-situ uptake sensors that detect consumption rates. In coastal fish farms, overfeeding primarily leads to increased disposition of detritus on the seafloor, while in hatcheries and land-based farms, excess food goes to waste and can potentially impact the surrounding catchment and local coastal environment. This this impact is usually highly local, and depends significantly on the settling velocity of waste feed and the current velocity and depth. Farm escapees and invasives. The impact of escapees from aquaculture operations depends on whether or not there are wild conspecifics or close relatives in the receiving environment, and whether or not the escapee is reproductively capable. Several different mitigation prevention strategies are currently employed for the development of infertile triploids to land-based farms which are completely isolated from any marine environment. Escapees can adversely impact local ecosystems through hybridization and loss of genetic diversity in native stocks, increase negative interactions within an ecosystem, disease transmission and habitat changes. The accidental introduction of invasive species is also of concern. Aquaculture is one of the main vectors for invasives following accidental releases of farmed stocks into the wild. One example is the Siberian sturgeon which accidentally escaped from a fish farm into the Gironde estuary following a severe storm in December. 1999. Molluscan farming is another example whereby species can be introduced to new environments by hitchhiking on farmed mollusks. Also, farmed mollusks themselves can become dominate predators and or competitors, as well as potentially spread pathogens and parasites. Genetic pollution and disease and parasite transfer. One of the primary concerns with mariculture is the potential for disease and parasite transfer. Farmed stocks are often selectively bred to increase disease and parasite resistance, as well as improving growth rates and quality of products. As a consequence, the genetic diversity within reared stocks decreases with every generation, meaning they can potentially reduce the genetic diversity within wild populations if they escape into those wild populations. Such genetic pollution from escaped aquaculture stock can reduce the wild population's ability to adjust to the changing natural environment. Also, maricultured species can harbor diseases and parasites which can be introduced to wild populations upon their escape. An example of this is the parasitic sea lice on wild and farmed Atlantic salmon in Canada. Also, non-indigenous species which are farmed may have resistance to or carry particular diseases which could be spread through wild populations if they escape into those wild populations. Such new diseases would be devastating for those wild populations because they would have no immunity to them. 
habitat modification, with the exception of benthic habitats directly beneath marine farms. Most mariculture causes minimal destruction to habitats. However, the destruction of mangrove forests from the farming of shrimps is of concern. Globally, shrimp farming activity is a small contributor to the destruction of mangrove forests. However, locally it can be devastating. Mangrove forests provide rich matrices which support a great deal of biodiversity, predominantly juvenile fish and crustaceans. Furthermore, they act as buffering systems whereby they reduce coastal erosion, and improve water quality for in situ animals by processing material and filtering sediments. Others, in addition, nitrogen and phosphorus compounds from food and waste may lead to blooms of phytoplankton, whose subsequent degradation can drastically reduce oxygen levels. If the algae are toxic, fish are killed and shellfish contaminated, sustainability, mariculture development must be sustained by basic and applied research and development in major fields such as nutrition, genetics, system management, product handling, and socioeconomics. One approach is closed systems that have no direct interaction with the local environment. However, investment and operational costs are currently significantly higher than open cages, limiting them to the current role as hatcheries. Benefits Sustainable mariculture promises economic and environmental benefits. Economies of scale imply that ranching can produce fish at lower cost than industrial fishing, leading to better human diets and the gradual elimination of unsustainable fisheries. Maricultured fish are also perceived to be of higher quality than fish raised in ponds or tanks, and offer more diverse choice of species. Consistent supply and quality control has enabled integration in food market channels. Species farmed. Fish shell fish, crustaceans plant seaweeds, 